interwebs, and thanks for tuning in to Girl on Girl, the show that is not at all what you were probably expecting, but it's still awesome. Today we sit down and chat with Nika Harper about words and other stuff, so I hope that you enjoyed today's video, and if you do, remember to rate it thumbs up. And foremost, let's get the introductions out of the way. You may know her from various places on YouTube. Author, video maker lady, dinosaur enthusiast, the wonderful Nika Harper. Hello! Hello! <laughs> Thank you for being here. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I know that we've been planning this for a really long time. Ever. And we've been talking yeah. about this for like two years. <laughs> yeah, like kind of an insanely long time. So, But it's happening now. I know, right and now. it's real life. In the I'm so excited. Yes. All right. <laughs> so you have been super busy. You've been writing. You've been doing your geek and sundry vlogs. You've just you've been all over the place. I mean, are you eating? Are you sleeping? Um, I I wish I was sleeping less. Um, because then I would get more done. <laughs> Um, I've been working on anything that I consider fun and and trying to kind of get my feet wet in new careers and try exciting new things. Um, I'm putting out content pretty consistently, but not as consistently yeah. as almost I would like. Like, I know that that seems weird, but when you're coming from a full-time job and then you start regulating your own schedule, it's just never enough. You're sitting you're there. You're your own worst boss. I, I know, but it's like... But it's 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 almost frustrating because you're there and you're like, what did I do today? Did I did I do everything that I needed to? Did I put out like 17 videos? Because I'm I'm never gonna feel good unless I wrote like five short stories and worked on the novella. Like, how do you being your own um, like record keeper is is so difficult because in addition to you should probably get these things done because work. Then there's also things like, well, you should really do the dishes, and you're just like, no. <laughs> Because that'll happen in the middle of you like trying to type something and being like, I'm being so creative. Oh, th is this my last shirt? Like, I really need to <laughs> clean today. And you just, How oh. do I laundry? Yeah, and then that doesn't feel like satisfying because when, you, when you're going to bed and you're just like, when you're working, you're only thinking about the chores that you haven't done. And when you're like, when you've done your chores, you're only thinking about the work that you didn't do. It's, yeah. it's so frustrating. Um, I'm doing... A lot of work for uh, reading videos for Patreon. Uh, it's a sort of like a mini Kickstarter thing um, where you can pledge to to support people. And um, sorry, I'm a little itchy. Uh, you can pledge to support your your favorite artists uh, in doing the things that they do. So I've been putting out about four videos a month, um, along with short stories or or excerpts of things that I've been writing and mm -hmm. doing like author readings of that. And that has been amazing. <laughs> Yeah, it's a really, it's a really cool business model. I've been keeping an eye on it. It almost reminds me of a more, like, it's almost like the Twitch subscribe button where people can subscribe on Twitch to directly support the people that are streaming. It's sort of like that, but it's more like open-ended where they can choose how much, whether it's a penny or whether it's a hundred dollars, like it's up to them. It's really neat. It's a really cool business model. Yeah. And it, you know, it charges whenever you do something. So it could be monthly or it could be mm -hmm. anytime I make a video or for me, it's mm -hmm. every two videos that I make. So it's two short stories or two new things and then two videos mm -hmm. that go along with it. So it's essentially yeah. four pieces of content that's happening twice a month. Um, so that surprisingly, should keep me busier. I should pay more attention to it. But there's a lot of other things that I'm like, I'm constantly looking for opportunities and, and just fun things to work on. And, and it's it's been an amazing time. That's awesome. I understand all of those. Things. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish that I was busier though. There's so many times when I, I feel like I'm not doing enough. And it takes questions like that to be like, am I, wait, no, really? Do I put out a lot of content? Because I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> I, was, I wasn't there for that. Could yeah. you recap, please? <laughs> I was, I, was I, I let it go, and then I just, I was sad the next day because I didn't do mm -hmm. that video today. Like, you know, there's always something. Uh, I get it. No, I get it. Now, in addition to all the stuff you were just talking about, I saw this preview for this new show you're doing called Arcade Arms, and I'm not going to lie, it looks kind of awesome. How did, how did you get into that? Like, how did all that come to fruition? Uh, I, you know, there was, there was this amazing guy named Adam, and I met him on the crew of Tabletop, and he had this show that he really wanted to do. Um, so if, for people who aren't familiar, um, Arcade Arms is a show about building weapons and then testing them out. So we actually oh, find... Yeah. Testing them out. We had to <laughs> test them on things like aquariums and uh, cement walls and all sorts of stuff. Um, and, and we find, well, 
I, I suppose it would be we. But um, Adam found these amazing weapon crafters to make these blades and maces, and we found a, a like a, a survivalist uh, bow maker. It was incredible and and to oh go God. to these uh these places where they've lived and so we went to like new brunswick we went to um uh, minnesota and uh connecticut to go and see these workshops and see the things that these incredibly creative people are doing to to uh -huh. make these weapons and then we bring in people who are like you know expert mace men you don't think that that's a thing <laughs> it's a it's thing, a thing. It is a thing. They're still around, right? Like we uh, these these uh, expert people who are in armored combat league, which is um, dress up in full medieval it's like armor, extreme and larping, the hell out of stuff. Yeah, like people bleed, people lose fingers. These dudes are like <laughs> ex marines. Oh, they were they were so my people. It was so incredibly fun. So I'm walking awesome. around like. You know, we're talking about like just beating up small things and like scrambling eggs, which is essentially just beating someone's head out. Yeah. Uh, oh. It was it was pleasant. brilliant. And over the course of, um, I guess it only took a couple days to shoot and film, but it was over like about two months. Uh, we put mm -hmm. all this together, and just the cinematography of that was super cool. And I'm I'm so glad that they came to me and asked me to to host it. They wanted something yeah. with a little bit of an edge. And oh. I've got tattoos, and I'm a little cranky sometimes. So it's like, can you be like? It, it was a really fun experience for there to be a script, because uh -huh. I didn't control the script. So they gave me the script, but it was already written for essentially my personality. Which is <laughs> yeah, nice. Kind of bombastic and kind of weird. Um, and then they're just like, and this is only like this is only the things that you can say. So really, yeah. what I did is that I took a lot of those things and just made them my own. I just walked in there yeah. and, and like freelance the whole thing and just, you know, it was so awesome to have a script that was me and then yeah. to have me build onto it even more. <laughs> That's so cool. Wait, so these are like real weapons. These aren't like cosplay weapons. These would not be allowed in conventions. These are like... No, I couldn't even, I couldn't lift some of them. Um, oh. we're, we're actually doing a lot of stabbing. There was a good amount of blood we're just, on Oh, we're set. doing a lot of stabbing. Yeah, people, people bled. Um, like it was... It was kind of intense because they're actually working with like this this thing, um, the mace that we have, which I think is going to be the first episode. Um, it's about thirty five pounds, and, oh my and it's not even full. Like um, it's 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 hollow on the inside. You're, we're going to go through and and talk about like how it was actually made. But this is mm -hmm. crafted out of like real bronze, and you have this thing, and I couldn't lift it. Look like anything else. Like it's part of my body weight. This was like like one quarter of my humanity, and I'm trying to lift it. Um, and it's got all these spikes and stuff on. So when we're smashing stuff, we're really doing it. And it was it was really cool to see um, kind of the the weapons and stuff that they're doing uh, to see which made out better. Like by the end, the mace was even a little busted up because we're taking down walls with it. Oh my we're, god! We're smashing everything. It was. So much fun to see it actually in, like, it, it was so much fun to see the weapon actually used like one should be. Yeah. No, okay. So as far as the weapons that you can actually lift, um, what, what, what are you most looking forward to smashing? Like, what are you looking forward to, like, or what would you want to? I mean, if, if in, a, in a perfect world, what would you want to destroy with one of these weapons? Oh, God. I didn't even think about that. Well, in the show, um, they give me presents sometimes. So sometimes they'll let me um, attack or smash things. So I'm not going to ruin it for you. These okay? are presents. These yeah, are yeah presents. no, they actually Sometimes said. they let me smash things. It was, I know, and it was a surprise. It was just the best thing. It was a surprise. Uh, so I have this, this, this scary mace, and they're like, I have a present for you. And I'm like, what is it? And I get to like smash all sorts of stuff. So you get to see oh me kind gosh. of in there working with that stuff occasionally too. Not as much because... Again, uh, there's a pole arm that's nine feet long. There's a bow which has like a draw weight of like thirty to sixty. Oh like, my god! These, these things are massive, and, and yeah, they're not. They can joking. take out a deer, oh. or other things. Uh, well, because it was a survival minotaur. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, it's it was it was really just um, amazing. What would I what would I smash? I didn't think about this. Uh, I would. I would smash. Oh. I would smash my old PC. Oh. Because 
I, I would pull an office space on that because that thing, <laughs> actually specifically my old video card, but generally the entire PC that I had to like redo. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that thing caused me no amount of of uh, pleasure. It was just a yeah. horrible, painful PC to have. And when I you finally smash it into like a billion pieces, all of the pieces, it would just be cathartic. Like oh, the the amount of games I didn't play because that thing was breaking the time. <laughs> It's just astronomical. So oh. I just want to. I just want to. This is how it feels. This is how it feels. PC. <laughs> All right. This is this is kind of getting intense and like a little violent. So I'm it's gonna go ahead and just, violent. I'm just gonna go ahead and change the subject. I'm gonna ask you some questions that are not related to violence. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. I mean, if that's what you want. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Alright, so all of these questions are just fun and goofy, so just answer them as you see fit. Okay. The first question is, if you could remove one word from the English language, what would it be? Oh. Oh. Wow. I can... No, I have this somewhere in me. Um, I would like to say literally, but I actually don't agree with that. Um, <laughs> here's one thing that I do. I would remove the word just. Not just. because of justice, and not because that is the just thing to do. But have you ever thought about how we actually use the word just? So, oh, I'm just saying that. I'm, I, you can say it as though you only now said it, for instance, there's an immediacy to it. But then what we really use it as is a way of sort of just, sort of just uh, backing away <laughs> from a statement that we're making, right? <laughs> It's true. Like all I meant was, uh, I just said, I just, I just I, said this other thing. I was, I was just saying that. Uh, are you gonna wear that tonight? I was just saying. I was just asking. I was, I was just. I was. I mean, I was asking. just. I, I use it far too much, and I notice when other people use it, and so far it has become like as of this year, I've become more aware of it. And it's become like my number one most hated word. I want to take it out of everything. I use that is like so funny. Often. I wasn't even in the ballpark. Like when I wrote up that question, I immediately decided that placenta would be the word. <laughs> <laughs> it's removed. such a gross word. It is. So There's no good way to use the word placenta, Uvula. really. Uvula. Uvula is a gross word. Uvula is just way too close to vulva. So everyone thinks and that it's a gross one. It's actually the grosser term. It's the dangly thing in the back yeah. in the back of your mouth. The you know what's funny is I can't. This is not on topic at all, and I probably sh this is probably TMI. But like I'm like the I must have an oversized dangly thing <laughs> because I can't take like if I take two large pills. Two out of three times I squish my dangly thing in between the two pills going down. <laughs> Oh so God. I have to take one pill at a time so that I don't squish my uvula. Your uvula. <laughs> Your uvula. Isn't that a silly word, though? And everyone thinks that it's something else. It's like it's like you call something um, an yeah. epidermis. And everyone's just like, what is your Ew. epidermis? And you're like, it's skin tissue. It's but my it, skin. But it sounds like something like that you would learn about in, in sexy science class. A like, lot of medical terms are not OK, really. I, oh, there's some of them that are really, really fun. Um, but uh, then there's just, and just is fucking horrible. Just is, just is the worst. Just is just, just a terrible word. Just is just, just, a just is the worst. I know, it's, it's so bad. But then, like, we are just done with this. <laughs> We're just, it's just over. It's just over. It's, 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 it's simply just over. over. It is only over. There's better words that we can use for something like that, but we use it because we don't know what to say. Yeah, I get it. I am from upstate New York, and we say like a lot, and I have had people in the comments that are like, I'm going to do a like counter. Because you say like as a filler word, you say like as a, like a, just almost like a descriptive It's almost word. like an um. It's like an um. Oh, like, I just so did it. what I was like saying was um, uh, kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. I'm from Only SoCal, from so we have a lot of the likes. We have a lot of likes up here too. Like totally, we're like all like, totally. I just. Valley. <laughs> <laughs> we just um, have that. See, now like you're gonna think about it, and I'm sorry for everyone no, else. No, someone did this to me once. Someone said, "Do you know what I hate?" And I was like, "What do you hate?" When someone says something is so unique, or that is the most unique thing I've ever seen, or that's very unique. Unique is a black or white term. It can't be more unique. Unique means literally one of a kind. <laughs> you can't be more one of a kind than something else. You are either unique or you are not unique. You cannot be very unique. You cannot be so unique. You cannot be less unique. You are unique or you are not what unique. What if you're not? So, okay, so there's uni. Can you be dualique? 
Can you be like, like multi-leak? Monoleak? <laughs> Monoleak would also be one, but it would be of a singular. Homonique would be only one kind of thing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> because homo is homogenous, which means like, of course, the same. So it would be the same amount of meekness. Yeah. <laughs> homonique. Okay. Got it. And this is a word that we are going to replace just with homonique. A word that we came up with, homonique now. Homonique. I... I, I Hominique wanted to say that <laughs> it's never going right. to catch on, but I like it. I think that we should just right. try adding well, it. We're going to move on to question two. Question duo unique. Duo unique. Duo. We're going to move on. We're moving on. <laughs> moving on. Question two. In an alternate universe where you're a cat, would you want to be a cat that was an indoor cat that was not allowed outdoors or an outdoor cat that was not allowed indoors. Now you could you can find your own shelter. If you can burrow into a garage or a doghouse or something that's acceptable, but you don't you don't like live in a house. You're not kept as, You're not, as an animal. You are like a wild animal. Would you rather be like a feral cat or like a pampered house cat? This is if you were a cat. Insanely tricky. Um <laughs> Uh, I'm I asking about, the hard-hitting questions I, here. I, know. I think about things in very um, large terms. So when I think about it, I'm like, well, what kind of house? You know, like because I would get bored. So you I would many, if you were if you were the house cat, you you would definitely be like well cared for. But, you but wouldn't I wonder be if like are there spiders in the house because I'd I'd get bored. So I'd want to like I go think after there spiders. would be spiders in any house. Like yeah. I I think it's okay to assume that there would be the occasional insect. You might even be in a house that has mice. Mice. That, I was hoping for mice actually. That was like I mean you you could there's there's gonna be those types of things in any house really. It's just yeah. how you know. I don't like bugs being, get into houses well, no matter what. I don't like being cold, so being outside okay. would suck. But I would like well, to Well, I mean, you could be an outdoor cat in California. <laughs> exactly. It sometimes even gets cold here for me. But then again, I'm not wearing a oh. coat all the time. Wow, I don't really want to be a hairless York. cat. Um, I, <laughs> would I be a hairless? Probably not if you were an outdoor cat. You never know. You'd probably they could be, be like out a, there. I could have many tiger. tiger. You'd be a black cat. Um, I, would, I think I would be a short-haired black cat, but I think I'd be an indoor cat. But I also okay. think that I'd be like the dickiest cat. Like the one that tries to dart outside every time the door gets open. E either that or the one See, that like <laughs> the one that like thinks that your toes when you're wiggling your toes is playtime. Because <laughs> yeah. you're just oh, like, yeah. I'm bored. You need to like release some crickets or something because I just need to <laughs> feed. Like I need to feast. So I would be so cool. I would be indoor because I like napping on soft things and probably gotcha. putting my butt on books like Catherine sure. want to do. Of course. But I would also have uh like Ferocious. So you'd be like a mischievous indoor cat. Yeah, I'd be one of okay. those, those annoying ones that people do YouTube videos of where it's like, look at my fucking cat. Look at my idiot cat. cat that's in the bathtub. <laughs> like, it's Nika cat. Nika cat. I am, I'm a YouTube cat. <laughs> it's, it's fine. It's your spirit animal. <laughs> my, my spirit animal is all of YouTube and they're a it's like grumpy. Animal. You're like grumpy cat, but like with a playful side. Yeah, because Grumpy Cat's kind of playful, but he's like Grumpy Cat's cat. adorable. Yeah, super Grumpy cute. Cat is really cute, like really, really cute. I would steal that cat. Which kind of YouTube cat would we be? Can I would be that cat that got rescued from like sure death because she's got problems. Have you seen her little bub, little bub the cat? Oh yeah, bub. Yeah. Yeah. Well, bub would not have made it in a humane society because bub is clearly not. Clear, clearly, Bub's vet bills are high. Like, you can look at Bub and tell that there's a lot of vet bills. And I feel like I would have been a cat like that, that had some sort of issue. That like, like, why is that cat's head always cocked to one side? And why is its tongue hanging out? That would, <laughs> that'd like, be me as a cat. And that's would, what makes good internet, is what we're coming. And I would be really fun and funny. I just might miss the litter box occasionally. <laughs> what litter box? I'm so confused. Whatever. <laughs> Yolo cat. Yellow cat, yes. Oh, is there a yellow oh, cat? I don't want to know. Um, I hope not. I would like to think no. There's got to be I would, cat videos that I can think of. But I'm bad no at thinking yellow. about things on the spot, so. Yeah, me too. Doing a, okay, doing so let me give you another question for you to answer on the spot then. <laughs> In an epic battle between the villains who got away, who would win, Bowser or Garrosh? Garrosh. You think so? I don't like Garrosh, but there's no denying that he is absolutely ferocious. And when it comes... Sorry. And then there's Mario things going off. Hypocrite. 
I don't know what just happened. Um, uh, <laughs> I just got a phone call. I'm getting, I got like five phone calls today. This never happens. It's because um, you're busy. That's how it works. No, but like, it's just really odd. Okay. So, um, in the quest of someone who got the way, I really would have to say Garrosh. Yeah? But particularly because, I mean, I don't like him. I don't think anyone does. Um, but he's, he's so, he gets stuff done. He's extremely okay. ferocious. And okay. he doesn't do go-karts on weekends, right? Okay. L hear me out, though. Okay. Not okay. that we're having a nerd debate about this, but Bowser has got, like, 25 years on Garrosh. Garrosh is going to die in Warlords of Draenor. I'm sure of it. Like, Garrosh is going to have his last hurrah. They're not going to string him out. So, I, like, yeah, I think you're right. Garrosh is going to be defeated. Will Bowser ever stop kidnapping Peach and other princesses? Oh, come Honestly? on. Honestly? But that's, that's like, okay, so, I don't know. That's like a children's hero, though, right? No, I'm like, like, he's not a hero. Mario's the I, hero. I know, but it's like, mean, you're, talking about, you're talking about stories of which, like, the bad guy really isn't so bad. So he'll just keep getting away. But, but that shit is bad. No, I definitely would Garrosh disagree. Garrosh cannot live any longer, right? Because he's just, okay. he's a threat to everything around him. Versus Bowser, when this is like, Peach had her own game where she had to save people. Like, clearly these are capable individuals who are doing, like, low-grade, like, storybook villainy. And that's nice, right? Like, and I'm down with that. But I think that Garrosh, it, it, it's... It's so what you're saying is that Garrosh would be charged for like serial murder and Bowser would be charged with common banditry. Yes, he would get charged with vandalism. <laughs> vandalism. He would be he would be the guy that would like tag Bowser on the name on like, you know, a building, but he would the kind of be doing of it for a reason. Bowser Mar. He'd be sort of <laughs> artsy about it, right? And then he has like artsy he has his gang and stuff, but they all just seem like assistants. Like he's <laughs> not he he employs his family. It's a family-run business, and it's a family-run business. It is. You know what would be great is if they made a Mario game where Bowser was like the good guy, and it was like the story of like the ugly stepsisters, like their side of the story, but it would be like Bowser's side of the story. See, like, I want to see that. Peach led him on. Like Peach led him on, and he really thought that she loved him, and he wasn't kidnapping her. He was taking her for a surprise thing, and she just wasn't in on it. And I think that Bowser's just gay. I think oh. that Bowser is, his, he's like small and kitten-like, so he's like, okay. he's kind of cute, right? So yeah. I think that like, he, he should just be like, oh my god, like Mario did that one thing again, he's like, girl, let's go out on a weekend, you know? We're gonna like get our nails done, did. we're gonna hang out. And then out. Mario's just well, like an overly jealous guy who thinks Bowser kidnapped her, but really... Yeah, it's and I'll, I'll, I'll swing by in my go-kart, and we'll just totally go. And then every time she's just like, but I miss him, and she's like, honey, honey, honey. Mario's bad for you. Mari, you're not, you're, look at you, look at your tears, right? Super Princess Peach, that's your, your ability is to cry on things. That's not healthy, girl. You gotta that's get out of okay. this. Have you played the new Super Mario 3D World? I haven't. Uh, I, Bowser has a cat suit in that. See? In see? Yeah, see? he's real cute. Ma he's real but cute. But he already looks like a kitten. Like, he became, he was like, raw, I'm Big Bowser. Like. And then he started to become less and less, and he's, he, like, he has a cute little nose. Or if you just added, like, whiskers, he's just, like, a little spiky cat. Uh, yeah, I'll give you that. But is he a house cat, or is he an outdoor cat? He's an outdoor feral cat. He's, he's one of the ones where, like, you, he, he's outdoors a lot, but you still feed him. So, like, he doesn't use a litter box but or whatever. So, yeah, he's... So, really, he's he's got you wrapped around his finger. Oh, he's yeah. got your cat, but you're feeding him. Oh, yeah, he's... Like, that's a new door. form of hunter, hunting, hunting, that's a word. Hunting and gathering is when you convince the humans to feed you. You're a hustler cat. Yeah, he's, he's a got a little bit of belt. Baby. That's what I, I should have been. I should have been the hustler cat. I should have... I should have been the hustler cat. <laughs> oh, you can't change your answers. Moving on, Why? moving on to bigger and better questions. Okay. If you were given the opportunity, would you rather travel 100 years into the future or 100 years into the past? past. Yeah? Yeah, I am a total... Uh, this is one thing that I've noticed about um, women in a weird way, where guys like space and robots, and girls tend to like dinosaurs. So... <laughs> And this is weird because I like like scary, angry dinosaurs, so there's uh -huh. a futuristic appeal to that. But when you think about it, like, you know, girls like robots too, guys like dinosaurs too. It's not, it's not the point. But if you yeah. ask people to decide, so well, we're only going back a hundred years though. You wouldn't see dinosaurs. Well, I, I, but You'd I'm be talking about like a Model T Ford. Excitement about the future or the past. 
And yeah. I think that girls are like kind of attached to the past in a certain way. And I know I am. So I started to look at myself as like a sort of litmus test for this. I'm with you on this. Like I would definitely go into the past, but it's because I don't know what the future is going to look like in a hundred years. And I don't know if I want to glimpse at that. It's what, also, if, what if you went 100 years in the future and it was like Fallout style, like that's also post apocalyptic, like horrible things? Like I, I don't want to see that. You know what I know is 100 years ago, horse drawn carriages, horse drawn carriages, but that's hoop skirts. But there's also like <laughs> the other thing with women that is hard to get their head around is that going back 100 years, what could you do for a living? And you're like, oh. oh. I can oh, see a no, going back 100 years, I know that women's rights were not there, but I'm just saying, being a woman 100 years ago, I'm an aw- I'm an awesome seamstress. Like, if I have a natural <laughs> talent, it's sewing. Like, I don't I don't have skills to do jobs these days. Like, what, what do you want me to do? But, but I could it. sew a thing, and she that would have been a me. useful talent 100 years ago to have. What, what, someone, I would have done. Someone asked oh, but they would have expected me to have babies. I don't know about that. Yeah, you'd, you'd have to get married, have babies, maybe be in some kind of servitude. There's a lot of really weird stuff back then. And so yeah, someone said, um, they asked like a room full of uh, my friends when I first started at Riot, actually. It was just like, if you could go back 100 years, what would your profession be? What would you do? And everyone's like, I'd be a bandit. I'd be something cool. I'd be like, I would be, oh, God, no, I couldn't be anything. And I decided <laughs> that I would be a brothel madam. Oh, no. <laughs> Because uh, I think that's entrepreneurial, and they had to have a woman to do it. And it's true. It's also you can treat the ladies right, and the whole bit. Yeah. And so it'd be like a, it'd be a little bit skeezy, but I'm super down with it. And I'd probably be I like got an it. old west saloon or something. I like that. I I think brothel madam would totally. Be I'm that. pretty I sure I would be. Good. Well, be, based on how my family was when I was younger, I would probably be poor. So I probably would have been some sort of servant. But I would hope that I would like. I'm not a very good cook. So I'm pretty sure I would have been the servant that had to, like, do laundry and, like, take care of linens and, like, sew lady. things. I could do that. Like, I not, you know, I don't think I would be unhappy doing that. As long as I wasn't, like, beat, I'd yeah. be okay with that. See, that's the I thing, would. is that if were, were I a maiden... Or a, a madam, as it may be, like a you know, I would I would make sure I would make a nice environment for the ladies as much as possible. I like, like that. It would it would be it would be very it's, classy. It's sort of like some sort of like back ass, but also forward thinking feminism. Yeah, it's, it's I answer like, to nobody. I've actually looked at, at this a lot. There's um there's really <laughs> I've looked into this. I've looked into <laughs> no, there's, becoming there's a, a really brothel, fascinating madam. history of um particularly in the old west because I think so, that that's a really cool uh, part of it of certainly the world. Is. Um, yeah. You know, a really interesting part of history. And they're like, you know, they're sometimes widowed women, um, but they don't answer to nobody. And they don't really have a yeah. lot of clout, but they. And they got like guns them. and shit. Like, if you fuck around in their brothel and you're doing things you're not supposed to, they will kill you. Oh, yeah. And they like, will kill you. Yeah. There's, there's some, it's some really ferocious stuff that, that happened. And I, I respect I like those ladies a lot. And I, I aspire to that. be one of them. I aspire to be one of them. I like this. Your little so finger. I, I you know that, right? Little. Your yes. your little finger. It's not, it's not <laughs> really a great thing. Okay, so this is the last question. Okay. It's very important. It's a very big question. If you if you had the chance, would you rather be the president of the United States or a squirrel with superpowers? Squirrel with superpowers. Yeah? Yeah, oh easy. Easy. What are the super? You didn't say which superpowers, but I know that the president has none. But I mean, what if you were the president in a time of peace, where you had a high approval rating, where you could really make some changes? You could get some stuff done. I don't. Less. I don't think that that exists. My opinion. Okay, well, I'm way too punk. So <laughs> there's a lot of things about like the administration and stuff, of which like the no matter man. who's in charge, it, I, I I get crazy about this stuff. So government and politics is one of those things where I'm just like. No, because it requires no. you to be cutthroat or useless. And I'm just like, eh, it's very house of cards. So, and, and I'm just not super down with it. So I think that I would be a squirrel with superpowers because it wouldn't matter if I did cool things or if I did, maybe I could like fly. Maybe I could be like the new Dumbo, <laughs> you know, like me, like a little, little squirrel me. Okay, so I'm imagining the squirrel from Sword in the Stone. Like okay. the little girly squirrel, girl okay. squirrel, and yeah. her with like with like a feather in her mouth and just like flying around. Maybe be nice oh. sugar glider, but sure, you know, but actual flying, and and maybe be able to like talk to people. I, see, that's funny. When I thought squirrel with superpowers, I went to like lasers. Out of your I would eyes. also have lasers. I oh, mean, okay. if, if lasers are on the table, I'm not. Uh, I'm like, never going to deny them. Superpowers, like I just. 
You want to be a fire breathing squirrel? Have at it. <laughs> yes, fire breathing, person talking, sentient flying squirrel. <laughs> That's what I want. Those are my, those oh, okay. are my four. Because I, I cause right. it doesn't matter then. Because then I'm just having a good time. Because all I really want to do is fly. And everything else is just kind of like added on to that. <laughs> like, do you want to fly? Yes. Would you rather fly or be the president? Fly. Would you rather <laughs> be a flying squirrel? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Would you do rather you just want to be a right squirrel? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't mind that, actually. You know what's weird is I recently went to Tennessee. And squirrels in the south are enormous compared to squirrels in the north. Like, we have winter. They die. They don't... <laughs> They don't, like, live to be old, wise squirrels. Like, it's, times are tough in New York for squirrels. Austin. Like, they have Austin to stock up. Cat squirrels. Um, yeah, they're the size of cats People in Tennessee. People squirrels, like, and then they're just, like, enormous, dumpy squirrels. Oh, just, yeah. No, that, in New York, squirrels are squirrel-sized. I mean, they're not, they're not very big. Yeah. They're like a kitten, like a kitten, like a size of a kitten with a fluffy tail. And I saw this squirrel in Memphis, and I was, like, distracted. And everybody's like, what are you looking at? I'm like, a, a squirrel? Like, what are you, the dog from Up? Like, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, it was just really big. It was just a really big squirrel. I did like, you pigeons in London. They're the largest. They're, like, pheasant. They're, like, enormous <laughs> creatures. These are, like, they're, like, you know, pigeons are usually, you know, they're, like, dove-sized, maybe, like, this big, mm -hmm. probably. Mm -hmm. uh, like, mm -mm, something like that. Um, and then, but the ones there are like enormous where I just, I was alone in London, just kicking it on a vacation of my own. And I just watched pigeons for a little while. Cause sometimes they would try to like get through these like wrought iron fences. And oh, I just no. wanted to see if they could. <laughs> they were it's that not like fat. a cat where you can fit anything through. No, I, I was a crazy American talking to <laughs> pigeons about how fat they were. I was I was that guy. That was my entire London experience, by the way. It was like That's me sort of excellent. muttering to myself under my breath and trying to avoid conversation as I stared at pigeons. As you were talking to the, the local... I was talking to pigeons. Yes. That's, local, that is uh, my actual superpower, is, is talking to inanimate objects and animals who have no idea that I exist. Oh. But that's that real. So I would flip that if I was a squirrel, where I would talk to humans. <laughs> Uh, it would be cool to be a squirrel with superpowers because people wouldn't expect it. You know, they'd just be like, oh, there's a squirrel. And if somebody tried to hit me with their car, I would, like, laser their car. <laughs> like, you tried to kill me, I killed you first! Yeah, exactly! What up, you know, like, gangster squirrel? My superpower would be extra thuggish. Which would, what, the lasers or particularly? Um, I would, like, cock my head sideways. Like, <laughs> Say what? <laughs> then shoot the lasers. I'm a squirrel. <laughs> Can I, be, you even can I be an indoor outdoor cat with squirrel laser powers? Yes. That can fly? That's also a madame at a brothel. That is also a brothel madam, but certainly not the president. <laughs> as long <laughs> as I'm not the president, I just stress, don't really too care. Too much stress. I just got to take care of my ladies and, and maybe fly. I'm not trying to get assassinated, thanks. Eat out of a dish. That's so great. <laughs> so on this ridiculous note... After ending this ridiculous interview, <laughs> this very professional interview, do you have any last words? Do you have anything you want to say? Do you have anything you need to get off your chest? Get out of your uvula? I just, <laughs> just take the actual uvula. I'll just throw it. Um, no, uh, I would love to say thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, oh. I, it's, it's been a long time coming, and this has been an amazing day of us just chatting. So it's, it's been great. Um, please uh, uh, check out Arcade Arms on Geek and Sundry. Um, it's, it's a really fun show. And um, if you like short story writing, um, I also do a lot of that. So check out my Patreon if you want to support artists being artists and writers being writers. It's a hard world for creative people to do what they do. Um, I think we all know that. And so support other people as much as you possibly can in doing so if you like what they do. And if you have Amazon Prime, her book is available for free. It's called Echoes of Old Souls. It is. It is. I'm, um, I'm creepy. Yeah, That's Prime why I know is free. This. Yeah. Um, uh, and I should do another free weekend sometime soon, so maybe remind me about that. But yeah, some soon trademark. <laughs> <laughs> I have I have the free days set aside, so I'm all good. <laughs> Excellent. So thank you so much for being with us, guys. I will have everything of hers linked in the information below. So if you want to find her on the interwebs, I will facilitate you doing so. I'll also have it annotated in this video, so you can go check out her new video, Arcade Arms. And I hope that you like it, and I hope that you liked this video. If you did, make sure that you thumb it up and leave us a comment in the comment section below. Subscribe to my channel, subscribe to her channel if you haven't already, and have a wonderful day, guys. We love you all. You're in our hearts. We'll see you soon. Goodbye. 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 You're being recorded right now, so don't say anything about, like, your meth problems.
I didn't say they were problems. I didn't say they were. Listen. I had, I had no math problems. I was not lamenting. All right. I okay. Was, uh, it's not. I don't have a problem with math. I yeah, love it. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If anything, I enjoy every second that I create. <laughs> I, enjoy, I enjoy every moment of my meth My problem. problem is how much I love it. <laughs> my only problem with meth is that I can't cook it fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> None of this will be in the video. Don't worry. Yes, no, please put this in the Maybe I'll put it in the bloopers.